guys and welcome back to my channel. I'm sorry I haven't had any videos in a while. It's just, um, man, the summer just flew by. I had so much to do. Life just got completely away from me. You know how that happens sometimes? Do you guys have that happen to you? Because I just feel like... It was just yesterday that I went to convention, it was just yesterday that I had to fulfill my Kickstarter, and it feels like my vac- well actually it feels like my vacation's far far away as what, but anyway, so the point is, is I got super super busy with just life stuff and things I had to do, and I didn't really have a lot of time for videos, but I'm hoping to be able to make um, some more time to do some more videos here soon. So for this video, I don't really have a topic per se to discuss. I know that in all my previous videos I did have a topic, but I'm just gonna fly by the seat of my pants here and go topicless. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh my god, that actually could be like a really good pun, couldn't it? Anyway, let's not go there. Moving on to brighter topics. Okay, not brighter, but more better behaved topics is what. Anyway, <laughs> since I don't have a capital T topic for this video, I just thought I would discuss um, watercolor and ink pens and just my general process and, and my thoughts on art and stuff like that. So be prepared for a big long ramble. Hopefully I will not bore you too much or go off on too many tangents because Let's be honest, the reason why I have topics is because I can get way off topic pretty quickly. <laughs> anyway, um, I'm starting to get off topic now, so let us reel back in. So, let's talk watercolors for a bit. I, uh, the impetus for doing more watercolors, aside from me wanting to get better at watercolor, is that I bought myself, as I treated myself, to the, um, the Holbein watercolor set. The uh, it's a twelve it's a twelve color set, and I went whole hog and got the fifteen milliliter tubes because there's like this deal on Amazon where you can get like the the set of fifteen milliliter tubes for I think it was like thirty four dollars or something, and that is like crazy. So if you are in the market for a set of professional watercolors. Though that is a screaming deal, let me tell you. Aside from me messing up a whole bunch in this video and needing a heck of a lot more practice with watercolor, let me tell you, um, I do, I really like these paints. I definitely recommend them. They, I just feel like the pigments are really nice quality. They, they are, can be very bright without being too unnatural. Um, actually, that reminds me that, um, if you've seen some of my other watercolor videos, you know that I have the Royal Talons Echoline set, and those are a dye-based watercolor, and those suckers are freaking bright, let me tell you. Um, if, you if you're not familiar with them, just go Google them or watch my other video and, and you'll see what I'm talking about. But what's great about the Holbein set is that um, they can be nice and and have these beautiful pigments without being uh, too, uh, I guess, electric boogaloo with the high saturation. I do love high saturation, don't get me wrong, otherwise I wouldn't have the Echoline set, but there's a time in one's life when one needs to be sedated. No, I'm kidding. Uh, when one needs to be, when one wants to have subdued colors. <laughs> Sedated, oh my god, okay, I'm gonna reel myself back in. Anyway, I meant when you want, like, you know, a subdued, more natural color. <laughs> Let's go with natural. <laughs> um, speaking of natural colors, I really like that gray, that purpley gray color that I mixed up for the background, but then I totally had to botch it on the, uh, the right hand side. I mean, come on. And I guess I could have tried to lift it, I probably should have, but. Eh, you know, it's just a sketchbook piece. Um, but I, I still like this piece anyway. I still can't get over the sedated part. So, one thing I neglected to mention besides the whole binds is that I did get a set of new brush pens. And this piece in specific I did using the Pentel, um, 
pocket brush pen, which I know a lot of other artists use. And I, I do really like this brush. The ink flow is pretty good. Uh, sometimes I work a little bit fast and I get like a little bit of um, like a dry texturing and the texturing is nice but sometimes I don't want that texturing but I think part, a lot of it is just going to be me getting used to the brush pens because it is something that is completely new to me and it I do I will admit it uh, the brush pens are a little bit hard to control but I want to conquer this I will conquer the brush pen. Yes. Anyway, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm laying in the last bit of watercolors here, the, the whole binds, and then I'm going to start applying the, the Gansai Tambi starry colors, and um, hopefully you'll be able to uh, see some of the textures and stuff, because I, I tried to show some of the, yeah, here we are, I tried to show some of the pans, and when I was mixing a little bit, hopefully... <clears throat> Hopefully it's easy for you to see the texture. I um, I kind of did this piece based off of a reference of a woman um, from the 1920s and I'm, I just made an educated guess that her dress was like a shimmering gold and that her shawl had some shimmering um, silver in it. So I just decided to paint everything with the uh, the, uh, the champagne gold and the white gold and I just went ahead and I painted over the uh, my inks and I kind of like it uh, because if you have a nice transparent wash it just gives a little bit of sparkle and a little bit of color but you can still see the nice ink lines under there slightly subdued um, so yeah I really I really like these Gansai Tambi paints, the starry ones, and I definitely want to work with them more. So if you've been considering getting this palette and you've been kind of on the fence about it, um, and you have the money to spend, I'd say, you know, go for it and treat yourself because I had a lot of fun with this palette and I just really liked how, you know, you could make it a little more transparent and then it just adds a little bit of shimmer and then you could also make it more opaque. Um, just by building up the layers of it and you know making it thicker um, so I feel like it's a pretty versatile paint and I really just enjoyed the shimmer let's let's face it I like the sparkle so yeah I really <laughs> I really like these paints and I would definitely recommend them um, <coughs> Another th another supply that I bought that you'll see in this video after I touch up the lips here is I bought myself a set of the uh, Faber-Castell uh, Polychromos uh, colored pencils and I show you the box here in a minute. Come on box, show up! <laughs> there it is. <laughs> anyway, um, so I, I, yeah, I totally splurged, right, because I bought the whole binds and the, the polychromo set, and it was not cheap, let me tell you, but I, uh, <laughs> I had some leftover money from Kickstarters and stuff, so I could afford it. Um, yeah, so to finish it off, I just kind of added some light coloring with the, uh, the polychromos pencils, and I do really, really like these pencils. Pre previously, I had been using some Prismacolors and also the Cole Erase pencils. I feel that the Cole Erase pencils are, are like fine for doing sketching and stuff. I like them for, you know, what they are. But I was never particularly happy with my Prismacolors, to be honest. I felt that they were too waxy and they didn't have enough pigment and I don't know. Maybe I'm just fussy because I know a lot of people really like them. So don't, you know, take what I say with a grain of salt. But what I really like about these Polychromos pencils is that they're oil-based and they just seem to blend so much better. For me, anyway. And also, I just, I really like the pigment. I just think that it's not, it's really bright. <laughs> and I, I just really enjoy these colored pencils. So, yeah. Basically, um, I'm going to be continuing to experiment with watercolor and also experiment with layering on colored pencil and more playing around with paints. I just, I don't know, I'm feeling really driven now, right now to get better at um, my traditional, traditional mediums. And then uh, 
like I think I said before, hopefully the uh, the practice will lead to my um, my digital art improving as well, because I, I don't think those two are mutually exclusive. I think that what you learn in one, you can definitely take to the other. So yeah, if you feel like they might be mutually exclusive, reevaluate that thought. <laughs> okay, I'll stop judging you. And we are about to the end of this piece, and I did take a few snapshot videos of the tools that I used, and here's the two polychromos pencils that I used. And next will come the paint tubes that I used, and I only used three colors on this. I used Crimson Lake, Permanent Yellow Light, and Cobalt Blue, because I wanted to mix everything that I wanted to make, because that's part of the practice of watercolor in my opinion. And next is the paint palette and the brushes that I used. As you can see, I only used those three colors and I mixed everything. And uh, when a pot got full and I needed to mix something else, I just kind of wiped out the excess and moved on. I do like the little ceramic flower, um, the palette, just for temporary stuff. And my brushes are just cheap synthetics. <laughs> One day I would definitely like to have some sables though. Uh, next up is the Gansai Tombi set. I used the champagne gold and the white gold on this particular piece. I haven't tried any of the others yet, but I'm excited to do so. And last but not least, I do have a short clip of the Petel Pocket Bush Pen. Ooh, it's so beautiful. Okay, I'll stop acting silly. And this is the end of the video, so thank you for watching everyone. Thank you for returning to my channel, and don't forget to like and subscribe and all that yada yada stuff. Thanks, and see you next time. Bye bye